Okay, so I thought I would do this uh, video for posterity. Um, this is a very rare rifle. In fact, it's kind of one of those rifles that's disappeared from the internet. It used to be a couple of years ago. You could at least find some kind of a story about it. Um, maybe a thread here or there. Um, but at this point in time, I can't even find those threads anymore, any of the information. Um, and what it is, is basically one of the most rare Blazer Tactical 2 variants in existence, which is the 2009 SOCOM Trials configuration rifle, which has a lot of lore associated with it. It's not particularly a famous rifle by any means. I don't think it was used in any movies, but um, the 2009 SOCOM trial was, of course, uh, the U.S. military's um, uh, bid, open bid for a new sniper rifle system. At the time, I think they were moving away from the M24 or the M40, I don't know which one it was, but one of those uh, older legacy uh, Remington rifles. And uh, they uh, had a bunch of competitors join the, uh, the bid, um, actually from around the world. Of course, Sig and Blazer. Uh, at this time, Sig Sauer had acquired Blazer several years before, actually about 10 years earlier. And uh, there were entries from Accuracy International, uh, PGM, the, the French manufacturer, a bunch of other uh, companies. FN had the Ballista. Um, and, of course, uh, Remington had the, uh, I think it was called the MCR. That was the gun that finally was chosen in the trials. And uh, the Blazer Tactical II uh, was uh, one of the, uh, entries and it uh, it it kind of has a strange story behind it and I have to give it to you uh, second hand here even third hand and a lot of it's just going to be speculation it's going to be me just saying what I know about it if uh, you maybe had a another theory about it or you knew somebody who was involved um, especially a first-hand source, uh, you feel free to correct me because I'm just going to give you what I, what I know. So in 2009, uh, SIG had the regular Tactical 2. This is a, an example of a regular Tactical 2. Everybody's seen this rifle. This is pretty much bone stock. It used a kind of composite almost rubber-like material stock that um, an aluminum rail receiver kind of embedded into. And this stock is almost an exact uh, copy or very much uh, exact dimensional copy of the original uh, Blazer LRS and uh, uh, UIT uh, Ta uh, tactical one rifles uh, there was also a version called the cism and those first generation rifles were created for european competition and when sig sauer bought blazer and i believe it was 98 or 99 they went directly to this platform and said oh can you take the old stock which was designed for competition and turn it into something that's military and very durable and that's when uh, the blazer engineers uh, you know created this this version of the stock which is essentially a composite piece uh, this is an example of what the actual stock this is a spare stock that i have actually looks like without the receiver rail in it you can see here it's inleted uh, just for that um, aluminum railed receiver it's fairly basic uh, it's not uh, reinforced with any kind of aluminum or anything else from what i can tell it's basically just all a composite material and then of course the aluminum receiver just fits right on top of it so this is an example of what a bare 
the bare stock looks like. Um, basically, this stock uh, was first fielded in the trial, and uh, or it was it was supposed to be fielded in the trial, and uh, all the other manufacturers, AI, PGM, uh, I think even Barrett had some stuff in there. Um, all the different Manufacturers had some kind of a folding stock, and that was a big issue, even though, from what I understand, the SOCOM uh, bid didn't call for a folding stock. It wasn't a requirement, but because it has this kind of weird design here that's just atypical of uh, most uh, standard bolt-action rifles, this was a bit of a stumbling point. So the concept was to hire a uh, local vendor, local engineer, local designer to come up with a folding stock version, which at the time didn't exist. Um, there were no, there were no folding stocks for this platform. Ugh. So um, I guess I'll just talk a little bit about the actual design. It was made by uh, a company called OPS Squared of Tom's River, New Jersey. And it is a complete kind of aluminum kind of mono block design. It does use the original Blazer uh, receiver, which is just a very a thin strip of aluminum. It's basically just this top piece here. And it sets down into the, the chassis. And Sig Sauer called this the MCS chassis. I'll, I'll flip this over in a minute. You can actually see the, the Sig Sauer mark. And it, uh, MCS stands for Modular Chassis System. And uh, it is all aluminum. I guess it, it does have two pieces in the sense that this block is different than this block. But, you know, these are basically permanently designed to be permanently mated. So this, this piece is... Uh, you know, it's not designed to come off. And um, it features a very unique takedown mechanism here, a very large hinge, big stainless steel pin. This part is all steel. And uh, it has, an, of course, an adjustable comb piece, and uh, it has a lot of adjustability. You can length of pull you can also slide the uh, butt pad up and down it uses a fairly common I think it's a limb saver uh, butt pad it has a built-in monopod um, it's kind of strange it has three positions again this is all custom or proprietary to this to this chassis uh, very heavy duty very heavy and uh, it has, I'd say, about three inches of ultimate travel. It's very easy to um, adjust it up and down. It's basically all kind of a fine adjustment. Uh, it does not lock in place. Um, the It just kind of rotates, and you put some weight on it, and it's supposed to stop, I guess. Um, this uh, hinge mechanism... Is very interesting because uh, what you do is you pull it backwards. Let's see if I can get this. It's very tight, and it's basically just a uh, plunger style system where this piece, which is made out of uh, steel, also fits into a little hole here that is also steel or a steel insert. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of locks in place. It does have a little bit of play in it, um, although it's, it's, it's pretty solid. But up here, what we have is a this little ring right here is actually hiding a special kind of set screw. So what you can do is you can stick an Allen wrench in there and pull a set screw in and out. So you can actually adjust the play in between these two surfaces. So if you pull, uh, screw this outwards, this actually becomes tighter. So you can pretty much always, even if this was really old and used, guarantee that the uh, plunger 
will create a, a, a really tight fit here. Uh, so it's a very interesting design, it's, you know, rock solid. I'd say it's one of the better ones that I've seen. Um, very quiet too. It's kind of kind of nice, and it uh, it's pretty pretty rock solid. If there's a little bit of play in there, you just fool with that set screw, and you can dial it out. Um, the strangest thing about the hand grip, so this is a custom hand grip that I made that uh, is basically like a tactical two. The original rifles had a Hogue overmolded grip, just kind of like a uh, like a pistol grip that you would get on a Smith & Wesson handgun practically. And this is actually an AK standard. So you can put AK grips on this. It is not AR, it's an AK standard. So pretty much any <laughs> AK grip will fit on this. There's a little a uh, couple of set screws here, and then a sub-assembly piece comes out, and that's where the uh, the bolt uh, or the uh, the threaded bolt that holds it in place sits. So very very interesting there that it's not AR; it's actually an AK pattern. And uh, going back over here, it has a couple of Picatinny rail sections that you can mount in different places. This one is uh, has a McCann rail on the top of the 20-minute McCann rail that's threaded all the way out front. This is another popular accessory. Not 100% sure if they used the uh, McCann mount for the U.S. SOCOM trials, but I think they did. I've talked to a few people, and they said that they had the McCanns on them. Um, let me flip this around. Okay, so on the other side, you'll notice that there is, uh, it has a pretty unique uh, uh, button system here where you uh, unscrew this side, pull this piece out, and then there's a very tightly machined set of notches that you can precision adjust the length of pull. It's actually only got about, I'd say, two inches of length of pull adjustment. This little stainless steel knob right here is actually part of the locking mechanism. When you uh, fold the stock, this piece swings around and locks into this steel cylinder right here. Again, extremely, um, it's just a, a kind of a press fit, and it's extremely tight lockup. I don't want to lock it here because I'm not going to be able to get it, get it loose with one hand. And... Uh, the other very interesting thing about the chassis is that it has uh, only a single magazine release. So the magazine release is made out of aluminum, and uh, you just push it on one side and the magazine drops out. This is one of my proprietary five-round 338 magazines that I prototyped years ago and then never went into production with, so that's why that looks a little strange. Uh, but the there is no magazine release on the other side, and if you wanted to put it on the other side, all you'd have to do is uh, take out a pin here and then put it put this lever. It's interchangeable on the other side. If you wanted a right hand side release, this is a, a left hand side release. And of course, on the original chassis, that's completely different. You have these little plastic tabs, and these tabs are on both sides, so. Theoretically, you have to pinch both sides in order for the mag to drop out. If you just press one side, the mag will not drop out because the other side is still locked in. That was a uh, probably a big point of contention with the uh, the SOCOM trial. They didn't like this pinch style setup. So, um, you know, here we have much more of a standard style mag release where you just press one side and it drops right out drop free and you can just flip it to either side um what else i mean it's that's pretty much it it's 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 a very 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 robust chassis uh it's one of the heaviest that i think i've ever weighed it comes in at something like uh six pounds this uh plastic version the original you know the composite version blazer version is something like three pounds i mean you can just you know this is this is very lightweight 
Um, it'd be about the same weight of maybe a McMillan style chassis. Um, this is just ridiculously heavy. It's pig heavy, uh, another three pounds added to everything else. So, um, it's extremely, um, extremely heavy. Um, they usually always came with these Harris bipods. They just have the little, you know, nub and they have this kind of like quick release or, uh, yeah, sling release type thing. There's also another one here on the back. That's what this, uh, This knob back here doubles as one, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's built like a tank. I mean, the rifle altogether. I have this crazy seventy-two millimeter Zeiss on here. Um, it's something like twenty pounds in this configuration. It's way too heavy. It makes a great target rifle. This is in three thirty-eight Lapua, by the way, right now. So. It's nice for uh, you know the range, but uh, you can really see why they probably weren't super interested in it in terms of the actual trials because um, it was you know just way too heavy, probably about three or four pounds uh, more than practically anything else. Um, I'll try to get see if I can get this on camera here. Let's see if I can flip this over, but you can see the. TAC-2 MCS modular chassis system. That's what it says right there. So, very interesting rifle. Very interesting piece of history. Um, I've only ever seen maybe one or two of these for sale, maybe on Gunbroker. Um, I got this chassis actually... Uh, from a gentleman years ago on, I think it was eBay. I paid like six or seven hundred bucks for it. And I think when they were new, they were selling more like 1500 bucks. And uh, it's a very cool design. Um, there were much better versions of folding stocks available for the TAC-2. The creme de la creme is probably the Australian X-Tech, which appeared roughly around this time, maybe a few years later. And uh, there's also... Uh, the actual blazer folding stock that looked a lot like this, but was in the same kind of rubber-like uh, composite plastic material that the standard stock is in. And uh, that uh, that version sold, you know, sparsely here in the United States. I've only seen a few of those. But this uh, OPS-2 from Toms River, New Jersey, SOCOM chassis has to be the rarest of all the Tactical 2 chassis that were available at the time anyway. Um, this is a copy of the manual it came with. You can see here Sig Sauer, when it counts, Tac 2 rifle chassis. You can also see the Hogue uh, grip there, the original. And, uh, you know, this is a very basic manual. This is just a copy of the manual, but it's just basically an installation guide doesn't really say anything about the rifle or what it was for or anything like that. But this is the way the uh, the chassis was sold. It was basically sold through uh, SIG dealers. And uh, it, from what I can tell, there were probably less than uh, a handful made. Maybe a dozen or something like that. Uh, a few of the guns in the SOCOM trials were actually sold as uh, uh, used pieces. I've seen a couple of those, and they look pretty beat up. This one was, of course, brand new. And uh, I don't think there were more than maybe a dozen mid. So, thanks for watching. This is a very, very rare rifle. I just wanted to make this video because I feel like, um, you know, this might <laughs> go out of people's memory completely. I, I remember seeing some uh, uh, threads on it back in the day, but they've all since disappeared. So I wanted to keep the information alive anyway about this, uh, this system uh, as it, uh, it's pretty interesting. It could have become the American, new American sniper rifle, military sniper rifle at one point. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.